Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and now this is the last part of this project. This is the part when we will talk through it, although you could see a lot of content from the previous parts when we were showing what we managed to do every week in this car. Shall we say rather complex system, yet it's it's pretty simple for us. For some people five-way, why do you need five-way? Why, why isn't three-way plus sub enough? But at the same time when we know what to expect from a system and what we want to achieve, a five way is just it's just what it what it takes. If you want to dial in the bass perfectly in a car, if that's what it takes, then it's gonna be a five way system. We knew that the mid bass in the kicks wouldn't necessarily play low enough. You could see that we only cut the kicks and we didn't cut it out. It's not true IB. It's just breathing into the chassis rail, which is not an enormous amount of airspace. Um, and we knew that in order to integrate a rear sub, especially as we wanted something special and we did the true IB sub through the floor, that wouldn't play high enough from that location at far back in the boot, um, high enough to have perfect integration. So we knew that we would need the front sub. It was obvious from day one, especially in this car, because you could see that the room space is just massive in these. Uh, we didn't lose any space with the build up front in the passenger foot well with the sub box and um, this way we have there you go the owner is right behind me he can also nod and say his things but we got perfect integration the base is just just right isn't it Killer. I showed the system to him and I muted every single speaker pair and, and the front sub the rear sub individually so you could also tell what does what and it's just not happening without any of them. You have to have all of them in place to get the perfect, beautiful, accurate upper bass with the mid bass in the kicks. So musical, so clean. Front sub just gives that great feel of punch that many people always cry about. I don't think you have to cry for that. <laughs> <laughs> it just does it. And then with any front sub, it's really difficult to play really low. People could say, oh, front sub is all you need, and then it plays down to 30 hertz. For some people, that's enough. But in reality, front subs can, can truly struggle to play below 30, let alone 40. Um, so in order to get that effortless extension, um, you really need a rear sub. And then if we do rear sub, of course we do true IB. Because... We went through, I think in part one, through the options or in the introduction. In the introduction, I explained that first we wanted shelf, mm -hmm. right? Then we had a look at the options in terms of time, labor and everything, odds and cons. And we just couldn't find any, any reason to, to say that it would have been better than true IB when it comes to ultimate sound quality. That was just not a single reason. Um, and then the spare wheel was just crying for for the sub down there. So, let's see the finished state. Oh, there you go, can't even open it. This is it, nothing. There's nothing in here. Our oh, water is dripping just because we had a quick wash. Um, yeah, we can call your car as the super stealthy build now. Five-way super stealthy SQ system. And you can't see anything, there you go. Let's take the panel out. Let's show it to people. The phone. Yeah, yeah, go for it. It's yours now. Here we go. You could see from previous videos all the gear that went in there. And it's, um, it's pretty cool that we have three amps, 10 channels of amplification, a 15 inch sub all underneath the floor. <laughs> and now we don't take that the floor up. As the guys could see from previous videos what's happening down there, down there and the fuse distribution is there as well so it's pretty compact in most cars if if people build a box they could um, put in 28 112 in a sealed box down there or maybe even a 15 in a smaller box if they built you know fiberglass tank closure or anything and that would take up all the space but then you would have to put the amplifier somewhere um, use one of those cavities and build it up, make a panel and cut the 
the side off a bit, bring the amps in along. Well, we were thinking about that as well, but then we knew how we could stiffen up the, the tub. Um, and then I could see that we would have enough space around the sub to put all the amplifiers in. And this way is just simpler, cleaner, all in there. Everything is braided, terminated with ferrules, protected with heat shrink, labeled, analog input, speaker level input, optical input, it has everything pretty much. A speaker level is only for phone calls, so we can still use the factory head unit for phone calls. Um, optical is obvious through the topping uh, D10S with the tablet right now. And then, yeah, the two monoblocks. That monoblock is running the rear sub, there's a Zap call SD1350, which is extortionately big for this sub, to be fair. But many people ask, why didn't we use Helix monoblocks? Yeah, you could use anything, really. But we were weighing up the budget, looking at the equipment, and I told to the owner that this is what we will have, because we have them, so we will use them. <laughs> um, yeah, the rear sub doesn't take much power at all. It's you were coming back early and you were looking at the excursion. We were not playing crazy loud, probably like 70% loud, right? Mm. And it wasn't hardly even... It was moving two mil. <laughs> Nothing. But it gives decent output. Um, and when you, when we push it, like on that Dead Mouse song, with the mental 17 hertz rumbles throughout the whole song, it's just so present. It's just not like with sealed boxes you can... Mm, is it playing or is it just distorting? or It's not playing at all. This shakes the car, but the good thing is we may show it in the next video when we will have a demo playing music and whatnot. We will show how loud the car it is, how loud the car is outside when everything is playing and there's not much to worry about, surprisingly. So that's the back end, nice and simple. Then we can have a look at the front end, the finished state. Well, it's not quite finished yet because the display will change. Because currently, what, what is that tablet you have? It's a Samsung Galaxy Tab S5e. Oh yeah, can't they make it? Any yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, they I don't make a, a newer version that's that size. They're mm. all massive now. I see. Yeah. But you want to change it to? A standalone OLED screen with a... Car dedicated with a car computer rather than running Android, yeah. Because? That, that would be the best way, because then I'll get full integration with the canvas, so I can do all sorts of neats and tricks. And also, I don't have to worry about uh, USB DAC output being fixed to 48, um, 48 sample rate on Android. Yeah, you can, you can go beyond that. Not that you have so many songs in higher rate, but when you do, you want to use it. You don't want to downsample. Um, so here we are. Let's jump in. Let's see this thing. <clears throat> yeah, we can't really see much from what's happening down there in the leg space. We took the floor mat out, so you can see the, the final look of the front sub. And is the torch still there? Yeah, just giving a bit light to wash over there because otherwise you can't see anything. It's so dark in there. Kicks completely disappear, and that's exactly the same line where the original um, leg rest was. So we didn't lose any space. Floor mat goes back, and nobody would ever tell that you have a sub there except when they get a foot massage. <laughs> and then they may suspect that there's something there. It was a no brainer to have the mid base in the kicks in this car. We always say that doors are shit, and I may be a bit stubborn not to deal with doors and um, also a bit, I don't know what to call it. Particular. <laughs> yeah. That's but, good. But I, you know, I showed it to you as well, yeah, yeah. how clean. Because there's too much in the doors to rattle. Everything. Everything. We did on the door card, we soundproofed it as we showed it in previous videos, just to minimize any noise. Plus, it's going to be a bit quieter on the road. But it, you, you can't compare it. Honestly, we could have had a really cheap speaker in the kicks and it still would have been very, very good. 
because I'm just so fed up with so many shops. Okay, people say I have to keep the value of the car. I cannot cut in the car. I have to put the speakers where the factory locations are. And in order to get a better result, of course, they go for the more expensive drivers. In a way, I understand the, the logic behind it. But the trouble is, in order to get good mid-base in a car, it's not about the driver. It's, it's about the installation. And then if you have a good installation with an expensive driver that's used the application, then magic happens. Then it's just like out of this world. Um, and this install as well, what, what the mid-base and the front sub does together, it's just so locked on to the top of the dash. The mid-base is the furthest away in your car, to be fair, well, other than the front sub, but even on driver's side, you can't feel anything from it. You, not like in the door when all the pressure hits your leg and you can, you can tell that your trouser is moving, you can locate the driver in the kicks, you can't tell anything. It just completely disappears acoustically. <clears throat> it's just all up on the top of the dash. And so, um, <laughs> this car has given us everything I would ever ask for when it comes to building a fantastic sounding system solid mounting for the mid base far up front front sub it's better than in the glove box yes some people say you know why do you put a front sub in a sub uh, in, in the glove box it's not great location for a front sub it is not but in many cases we can't do anything else that's the only place where it can go if if you want something better then put it in the footwell if the car keeps space for it this car has just mind-blowing amount of space there it's, it's unreal to be fair I don't even understand how you have so much depth behind there whereas where the sub starts there that's almost where the floor starts here so on this side you don't have anything any more space under that carpet but on that side you have an extra eight nine inches so the, the fireball is, is not straight it's not even on that side it goes further out Mad. Yeah, but that's now our luck, because we could put that 10-inch sub there. Um, the only thing I would ever change in this car, but then we were looking at the time scale, budget, what we can, what we can do, um, is personally I would I would put the mid-range to the dash. It would breathe better. It would also help with distance to the stage. I have videos on. Patreon guys, if you want to learn more about speaker placement, aiming and things like that, go to the description, click on the link to Patreon, where we have weekly topics, and then every week we pull one out, out of the topics that the subscribers suggest that I should talk about, and then we had a topic where we were talking about the odds and cons of mids on the pillar, or mids on the dash, they both have odds and cons, but if I could choose, then I would always go with the dash. But we were looking at the time scale, and yeah, you saw every day what went into it. In the first two weeks, we didn't have the best uh, progress because I still had to deal with Chris's TT first week. Then Eddie got ill, caught COVID. Then he was out a day following week. He wasn't in, still not in the best shape. And then one day I was off. So yeah, the first two weeks, we didn't have the greatest progress and you could also see those in part two and three and then now for the last week we <laughs> oh yeah we still have to sit down and, and check what went into it but the last week yeah probably like 90 hours just flew into this build between two of us with Eddie just to finish it and we could see that the dash just wouldn't happen it wouldn't have been safe to pull a dash and then potentially see Un unexpected surprises and that could have dangered deadline because um, looking at everything else in the car how everything was coming apart it wasn't simple and then we were like mm, okay it's safer to build the pillars we would have put the, the tweeters in the sale panel probably anyway mm, okay no if the mid if the mid had gone to the dash then the tweeter would have been on the pillar then we wouldn't have done sales but this, this was a safe option. And it worked out well enough, especially because the mid bass in the kicks plays up stupidly high without any acoustical problems. Um, 
Uh, not stupidly high, but way higher than normally where we would cross a mid base to a mid range somewhere up on the top of the dash or at the pillar. Also, if you want to see the full RTA evaluation video of this car, then you will find it on Patreon. Then you will see me talk about all the measurements, what the drivers are doing, how the system got tuned to pull together, what is doing what. It, it gives you more insight into how a system like this comes together. Because, yeah, five ways. Three-way front end plus front sub plus rear sub. And it may sound like a lot, but when it works out, then it does magic. Yeah. Because I was talk telling you as well that Suzuki has the top cream mid base we've ever had and integrates to the rear sub very well. But we don't have the full picture in that car because we have a sealed box. It, it doesn't have the extension and the effortless low end. Whereas your car now does everything. Doesn't it? It, 100% I always say mid base is the most difficult in any car and in this one it just worked out so well it's so transparent yeah. between the front and the back you just don't even know no you don't even know that the sub is at the back oh, what I haven't showed oh there you go let's fold that down so behind there we had to cut through oh there you go I think that's I had footage of that but I show it even in this video so their speaker cloth, oh actually, yeah, I can see the cover panel at the back, but there's another speaker cloth there. So when you look through from the back, you don't see anything from the cabin other than maybe the light now. But we had to cut the plastic out there and then cover them. This is a thin three mil plexi sheet speaker cloth, so it sits in tight. So if this needs folding up, it can still fold up but then the base comes through so easily without any limitation it doesn't build up the pressure in the back where i see in other cars when people fold up all the back seats they have a sub box in there a sub box that's crossed high and it, it crossed at like 60 70 it still plays at like 120 and it just creates so much energy that the whole car wants to fall apart we have a customer um around croydon who has a newer um i think is a seat E-Class, e C-Class or E-Class Coupe and he has a huge JL 12W7 in the box at the back and the whole thing just wants to fall apart <laughs> um, in order to get enough feel of base then yeah a lot of pressure separating at the back but this way we only play the sub for the lower octaves at the back and the pressure can get into the cabin and then the front sub plays the upper base as I mentioned, you can see all the, the RTA measurements, everything on Patreon, then then you can see how it all comes together. So, yeah, this will need sorting. I have nothing to do with that. Some of you may say, eh, it's not a nice finish, right? Because... Uh, <laughs> Very work in progress, yeah. Yeah, someone didn't have time. We just quickly put it together, because you have buttons here as well. You have the uh, the heat, heated seats, right? Yeah, with those? heated seats, yeah because the top row of buttons is missing one more it's because it's free stage <laughs> oh okay yeah and then the hazard button so that's the hazard button was also there wasn't yeah. it so you put that there had to be relocated there you go for mot purposes of course exactly just mot nothing else yeah so once once you finish that area we will see the car back then the system will also run in yeah um we will have plenty of time on on the on the speaker so we can finally have final final tune because the tweeters once they run in they will have more top end for sure um they will have more detail and air on the top we will see we will remeasure the car and we will see how the running in time affected the response but all the base drivers will loosen up so they will be even more transient um not that the system is lacking much right now but but yeah all speakers need running in so here we are this is probably end of this video then at the very end you can see all the build pictures all together hopefully you you enjoyed the the process of this and all the parts when we showed how we were progressing the owner could see even more every day every night yeah oh, i was uh, addicted yeah. to those updates just 
needed to get that fix every night. <laughs> yep. After a bad day, just, <laughs> I just need the update from Pete how the system is happening. <laughs> but I always say that everyone should, every shop installer should operate the same way to give updates of a, of a big project to the owners because then there's no surprise at the end. There's, there's nothing like, oh, I, I thought that you would put that there. Oh, I thought that you would run that cable as well. Mm, you didn't. Um, mm, oh, I forgot to tell you. So all those things were avoided. Yeah, and I'd quite like, a few yeah. requests. Because when we were running cables to the front, we have optical, RCA. We have, well, we can show that it's in unfinished state because you have to sort out light there. But that's where the topping is. And we had to take out the CD changer today. Uh, there's a temporary switch, RCA optical shoved into. There's the USB for tuning, a remote line going there. So there's there's a lot many cables were going there, and then you had specific ideas about what you wanted, and and you also wanted us to put through like five different cables between the glove box and and that area. And I was just like, yeah, you deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> the the holes are there on the side. Once it all comes out. You can run in your extra little cables because yeah. we will have a, <coughs> a power distribution over there as well we ran the cable there positive and negative so you can have feed for car pc yeah temporarily what we have that switch for that's the the power coming to the front so we just feed the remote back right now through that switch and then once you have your car pc then you can control the system via that is it gonna close back now no <laughs> It does okay so here we are an exciting great project and it sounds stunning it sounds awesome in the next video you will get a bit of demo which is still a phone recording I always say it's just for inspiration nothing else don't use it as a reference try to compare it to other cars where I've recorded the music playing I know people do it with reference level headphones and great floor standing speakers at home and yeah it can give a bit of idea about what it's like but it's, it's, it's nothing like when you sit in here you don't get the emotions you don't get the feel the feel of the drums uh, the bass you just don't feel it the same way and that's probably one of the reasons why many people like car audio because they like like to feel the bass too and that adds to the experience whereas at home not many people can do that if they have a pair of bookshelves or a nagging wife or a, <laughs> a screaming neighbor turn that fucking system down so well who knows you may turn up at a few meetings in the future it would be nice yeah it would be nice For if sure. we could see you at a few meetings and then people could have a chance to listen to something like this this is certainly a biggish project more labor goes into it than to a normal daily system because i always say like the Tiguan we built or the Golf Mark 8, those simple daily systems, daily systems, they have anything between 8 to 12, 14 day labor, depending on level of soundproofing, um, the amount of amplifiers we have to fit and, and wire up, <coughs> things like that. But um, this is somewhere halfway up, or we have to add up the time now, how much went into it somewhere around 20 20 few days um into the whole build all the fabrication that was needed and yeah we have the extremes which are above 30 days that's when yeah things get wild but then in those systems people also want fancier panels and lights and whatnot whereas we kept it simple here all, all the, yeah and it, it has its beauty Oh, actually, I should I, get the speaker covers. Um, yeah, no, we don't put it now because I still have to take. No, you can put it in. That's the end of the video. Yeah, then I take pictures of the speaker covers because we have speaker covers for the front and we just left it uh, exposed so you can see the drivers. That's why they are recessed a bit. So, <clears throat> the moment of truth, nicely goes in. That's it. They they are push fit, super accurate. Once you put it in, it's not going out. You need a, a small pry tool to get them out. Yep. And then everything looks stealthy. Love it. From the outside, people can't tell anything. 
There you go. The other side, you're not bringing it. That's it. Yeah, you may need a tiny little tool to pop them out when you want to show it to friends or family what's there. So we 3D, 3D printed those. You could see from previous part when we had a time lapse on those and Eddie designed support. You can see that hexagonal shape support for both. So the speaker club doesn't sag. Give support, people can't poke their fingers through the speaker cloth or anything like that either. Um, especially for the tweeter, it's important. So, yeah, that's the end of the the video. Stuff you look, and then yeah, the carpet will go back. You don't see anything from the sub either. It's all hidden, all gone. This is it. I'm gonna finish it here. Hopefully, you liked it, guys. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see the next video as well. And I should always say. Click on the the bell button and 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 set uh, notifications. notifications on. Then you will get notification when we upload a video, right? I have to practice this to say it to people. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when when we share a video and then people just jump straight in first, second, third. <laughs> they just drop a line like that. It's brilliant because they are looking forward to the updates. It makes me feel always good, and you know I always laugh at it. Um, but this is it. Hopefully you all get to hear a system like this once in your life or even better, own a system like this. Then you can have the best time, have the best time in the car driving around or even just sitting on the driveway and, and enjoy the music because this is where the ultimate freedom is given to enjoy music. Cool. That's the end. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.